So Paul, we've managed to image our first planetary system around a nearby star. Uh, is that the only one we've seen so far? Well, this is a fast-moving field, and we'll be out of, everything we tell you here will be out of date before we've said it. Um, but there are a few more being discovered. And the next one was actually in some ways kind of similar. It's another bright star, um, Fomalhaut, another star with a debris disk. So okay. very similar to HD 8799. And when it was looked at with the Hubble Space Telescope, you can see very clearly this debris disk, and you also see a little dot just inside the debris disk that seems to be moving. All right. And so the Hubble Space Telescope normally looks in optical and infrared wavelengths, or near-infrared wavelengths. So that's a little different than the previous one, which was looked at in the mid-infrared, where these things could glow if they weren't, uh, you know, didn't have to be very hot. Yes, it's a bit weird. I mean, here's what you'd expect a spectrum look like, these dotted or dashed lines over here, which is nothing in the optical wavelength, and then climbing in some sort of complicated zigzaggy way up. And these are the infrared attempts to see it. No one has yet succeeded in seeing this in the infrared. They look very hard with a number of big ground-based telescopes. However, yeah. we look with the Hubble Space Telescope in the optical, it's booming in. So somehow it's producing optical light, but not infrared light. Right, and that optical light looks an awful lot like an A star, that is a 10,000 degree star, which is of course what Formahol really is. So either this planet is actually at you know, 10,000 degrees, which doesn't sound like a planet to me. No, it doesn't, not seem, a doesn't seem bright enough. Or what we're actually seeing here is not the glow from the planet, but the reflection the light of foam and how off the planet. Okay. Okay, so um, by looking at how bright this is, we should be able to tell how much light is reflected off it and hence get the size. So we're going to see if it's a disco ball in the sky reflecting its star's glory off into space. Yeah, so let's see how big it is. So how big is this thing orbiting foam and out, foam and out B? Well, if it uh, has a spectrum in the visible, that probably means it's scattering the light from this, the star. So we've got the star, Fermilhout, emitting its light in all directions. And out here is a planet of radius r, and it's intercepting some fraction of the light, which is being rescattered. This is a calculation we've done many times before. So what we want, what we know is that the distance here is 119 astronomical units. This planet is a long way out. And we also know that Fermilhaut B is about 25th magnitude, and Fermilhaut itself is about one first magnitude. So there's a 24 magnitude difference in brightness. The magnitude scale is a strange and barbaric thing left over from prehistoric times. Each magnitude is a factor of 2.5112, so that means difference in brightness is a ratio. So the the brightness of Fermilhaut over the brightness of the planet is roughly a factor of 4 by 10 to the 9. So a very big difference in brightness between the two. So, given that, how big is this thing here? We need it to intercept this fraction, one over that of the light. So the cross-sectional area here is just pi r squared. The total sphere over which the light has spread has got an area 4 pi d squared. So we want 4 pi d squared over pi r squared to equal 4 by 10 to the 9. So it's light into planet, 1 over total area. This is assuming the planet scatters all the light, so it's a mirror planet, which is unlikely. Um, but let's run with that for the moment. Cancel that. Cancel the fours, and we end up with R it's approximately equal to 6 by 10 to the 8 meters. Now, if you bear in mind that Jupiter has a radius of 7 by 10 to the 7 meters, that means this thing is 10 times bigger than Jupiter. That is to say, its radius is 10 times bigger. That means its volume is 10 cubed, i.e. a thousand times bigger, so presumably its mass, if it's got a fairly constant density, is a thousand times that of Jupiter, which makes it a star, not a planet. So that's awfully big. If it was a star, even a brown dwarf, it would be very much brighter than this, so it would have a rather different spectrum. So, something odd going on here. It's, it's very big. So, Paul, that is one mighty big disco ball. It doesn't seem 
remotely plausible that that could possibly be a planet. So what could it be? I mean, maybe it's some alien civilization that's built huge sails or something like that. Oh, I like the sound of that. But most likely, it's what we've already talked about, it's dust. So what we need is a big ball of dust, lots of small things um, that can reflect lots of light, just like debris disks can. Yeah, okay, but Paul, we saw that when you have balls of dust going around uh, stars, the dust gets stripped off and dragged away, and it shouldn't shouldn't last very long. And as this ball actually moving from place to place, yeah. I mean, as it's, if it's orbiting around... It should leave a cometary tail or something, right? Yeah, and also the inner bits would be closer to foam and out than the outer bits, so it should orbit faster, so it gets stripped out. So there's no way it can stay as a coherent lump over several years. So what's going on here? I mean, maybe if it is a ball of dust or a, a, a disk of dust, something there must be something holding it together. So the current best guess is there really is a planet here. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing the planet, what we're seeing is somehow the planet is surrounded by a cloud or a disk of dust, and it's that disk or cloud of dust being held together by the planet's gravity that we're seeing. It could even be what we're looking at here is the formation of the moons of a planet. So you've got a planet which has uh, got a, uh, like Saturn's rings, only much, much bigger, um, which is eventually going to coalesce and form moons. This is how we believe the Galilean satellites of Jupiter were formed. There was a, a disk around Jupiter that sucked it in. So maybe that's what we're seeing here, or maybe it's just some cloud of collision, something that's bound and trapped and doing some sort of weirdo orbit around this planet. So this object really could, I guess, be like a giant version of Saturn. Saturn's rings are very good at reflecting light. And so you can imagine a super Saturn out there. That would be cool to see. It would indeed.